The simplest things are sometimes the most precious. Honey, rye or wheat flour, sugar, almonds, nuts and expensive spices like cinnamon, pepper and cloves, combined with a sizable portion of time, skill and love, can produce true wonders of confectionery art. This is the case with gingerbread, which has been around in Europe in numerous forms ever since the Middle Ages. The founding of a monastery like Sakao in Styria in 1143 was a missionary act designed to consolidate religious faith in the region. It also established a monastic economic community. Large numbers of craftsmen, whose ranks probably included a gingerbread baker, settled around the Augustinian monastery. One of the tasks in monastic agriculture was to keep bees not primarily for making honey cake or gingerbread, but for producing candles. Placed on large candelabras, their main purpose was to illuminate the church. Tasty gingerbread cake was merely a byproduct. With its Romanesque image of the Virgin Mary, Sekau Abbey has been a place of pilgrimage ever since the 12th century. In the church, candles were donated in front of the image. Ancient documents show that a gingerbread baker has worked as court confectioner to the Augustinian monastery ever since 1660, and it's not surprising that gingerbread was produced so successfully here because in the Middle Ages, spices were expensive and only monasteries could afford them. It is clear that the monasteries here were the first to adopt this tradition. After all, even though spices were extremely expensive, they had the necessary financial resources. So naturally, the monastic kitchens, the monastery bakers and bakeries were the first to have access to spices. Even the ancient Egyptians baked gingerbread, the ancient Greeks used it as an oblation, and it was in ancient Rome that the first confectionery shops appeared. They were known as dulciare. Situated on the banks of the Vistula is Torun, the gingerbread capital of Poland. It is surrounded by a medieval city wall with towers and gates, which offer access to the old town with its Gothic buildings. the Copernicus House, a medieval patrician house which, in the latter half of the 15th century, belonged to the family of the celebrated astronomer Nicholas Copernicus. In the Gothic cellar of the Copernicus House, gingerbread is still baked in the tradition of the medieval gingerbread bakers. Every child from Torun and the surrounding area has to have baked gingerbread at least once during his or her school days. Working with the honey dough forms a bond with one of the crafts of the town and brings an element of the Middle Ages directly into the children's lives. Documentary evidence of the existence of gingerbread bakers in Torun goes back to the 13th century. They created a cake that became famous far beyond the city walls. Torun gingerbread was also shaped in moulds. These were carved in Torun and decorated with motifs of the kings and queens of Poland, as well as those of male and female citizens and horse-drawn carriages. The 17th century saw the heyday of mould carving. Around 350 historic moulds from the time have been preserved. A port on the Vistula where goods were bought and sold, Torun was a bustling place. Expensive spices like pepper were also traded here. Goods could be stored in dry conditions in the cellars of Torun's Gothic buildings. The industry and skill of its citizens brought prosperity to Torun because gingerbread was an important commodity. In 1778, even Catherine the Great of Russia received a gift of gingerbread from Torun. Okay. 
and gingerbread presents can still be purchased in Torun today. Behind the facades of Torun's Gothic wooden buildings, gingerbread spices and other ingredients are waiting to be sold so that Torun gingerbread can also be baked in places far away. In the traditional Lenkiewicz confectionery shop, the symbol of the Torun, small gingerbread cakes known as katachinka, are still baked in line with a traditional recipe. The dough is made solely from honey, good flour, a secret spice mix and baker's salt as a raising agent. The mould for katachinka is an oblong with six intersecting circles. On the opposite bank of the Vistula and in the region of Tsimia Chelminska, even in the Middle Ages there were lots of bees to supply the town with aromatic honey. The flour, usually rye flour, also came from the region. Bakers economised on other ingredients, apart from the expensive spices that is, because they gave Turin gingerbread its special flavour. Freshly baked, the gingerbread was crispy and also went well with wine, not only at Christmas time but all year round. The combination of its ingredients meant the gingerbread could be kept for years. It was easy to store and transport, provided it did not get wet. Although many legends surround Turun gingerbread, its Polish name, Katarzynki, is a reference to St. Catherine of Alexandria. The best known form of Torun gingerbread, the Katarzynki, is directly linked to St. Catherine. According to legend, she was a nun who saved the people of Torun from starving by starting to bake gingerbread. In honor of this brave woman, this type of gingerbread was named Katarzynki, which means Little Catherine. Another tale tells of how Catherine took the shape from two hearts connected with two rings as a symbol of the love between two citizens of Torun. But yet another legend, probably the most popular of all, draws on the date when Katarzynka are baked. Starting on St. Catherine's Day, November the 25th, this speciality is baked right through Christmas. Turun's Gothic patrician houses have been preserved. The connection with Copernicus, the astronomer, is still very close even today. But the connection with gingerbread is just as close. Torun is often referred to as Poland's Nuremberg. In Polish, it's called Miasto Pirnikow, the gingerbread town. The ruins of the Ordensburg fortress bear witness to the early history of the town. It was built by the German knights who founded Torun in 1233. In the early modern era, all spices were known collectively as pepper, whether we're talking about ginger, cloves, peppercorns, or cinnamon bark. All these spices give Torun gingerbread its typical flavor. The honey is carefully mixed with rye flour. Here in the Museum Piernica, Turun's Gingerbread Museum, youngsters are rolling ready-spiced honey dough. Like the Copernicus Museum, the Museum Piernica stages workshops for school children. At first, it wasn't certain whether the project would be a success. Today, though, the museum is booked out months in advance. Thousands of children come here at least once during their school days to bake their own Piernici. Naturally, they're allowed to take the result of their efforts back home with them. The plain brown gingerbread cakes soon came to be decorated and painted. It's interesting to note that the sugar glazing is a lot older than you'd at first think. It's not actually a 19th century product, but dates back to the 16th century, to a time when sugar had become a little cheaper as a result of increasing imports of cane sugar from America. In those days, the sugar glaze on gingerbread was referred to as ice. 
It lent the whole cake aesthetically appealing. And there were other factors too, like the gold and silver foam used to coat the gingerbread. Gingerbread hearts are still decorated and coated today, in all colours and with little sugar pearls. Lines are drawn with skill and here and there an artistic feature is emphasised. Each cake, each heart is unique. In the past it was gingerbread bakers who mastered this ancient art. Today at the Museum Pianica it is being revived, often to the astonishment of museum visitors young and old, by students studying design at Turon Art University. Down the ages, some forms of gingerbread icing have changed. It was during the Age of Enlightenment in the late 18th century, around 1784 in Vienna, that coloured icing was banned. In the end, for hygienic reasons. And in Frankfurt, around 1791, gold and silver foam for decorating gingerbread were also made illegal. The gold for decoration purposes was often replaced by copper, which was cheaper but also toxic. Padubica, the gingerbread capital of the Czech Republic, has been situated at the confluence of the Elbe and the Trudimka for 700 years. In the historic center, Renaissance buildings bear testimony to the former wealth of the town. Many still have Gothic cellars. Baroque Jonah House commemorates the legend of Jonah and the whale. Baking gingerbread has a long tradition in Padubice. The first gingerbread bakeries were established as early as the 16th century. In the 20th century, many companies were set up which exported Padubice gingerbread worldwide. Instead of honey, sugar or treacle, which were readily available, were used for the industrial production of gingerbread. The town and its inhabitants profited from the gingerbread export trade. Even today in the centre of Padubice, you will find the occasional gingerbread shop with its colourful gingerbread cake, known as Padubiki Pernik. Located a short distance outside Padubice, in the former hunting lodge of Baron Drasha, is a gingerbread museum. The lodge was converted in the style of a gingerbread house. Alesh Vostraesh uses only honey for his gingerbread. The main spice in his recipe is cinnamon. Local honey and cinnamon are carefully mixed together. Then a little wheat flour is added. Finally, the sticky mass and the rest of the flour are kneaded to form a dough. In the Czech Republic too, there was a gingerbread baker's guild dating back to the Middle Ages. Its members were proud of their trade. At the Gingerbread Museum in Padubici, they have revived these roots and in doing so, noticed that baking gingerbread is a challenge for men too. Kneading the dough calls for a lot of strength. That makes it a man's job. My wife couldn't handle it anymore, so she asked me to help her with the dough. And that is how I came to make gingerbread. The main sources of income for gingerbread bakers in the Middle Ages included church festivals and fairs. Visitors would buy gingerbread in the form of hearts and other designs. It was good business but involved a lot of work. 
Alej Vostres carves some of the family's moulds himself. He's found others in old kitchens and attics. Encrusted with the flour of years gone by, they just need to be carefully cleaned. Lime wood is particularly suitable for moulds. Not only is the wood soft enough to be carved, it doesn't stain the gingerbread or affect the flavour. Pressing each piece of dough into the mould and making sure it does not break up when it's removed is no easy task. There is often a demand for beautiful moulded cakes for special occasions, not only for weddings, christenings and birthdays, but also for many other occasions. Here, as far as possible, every gingerbread request is met. Fresh out of the mould, the gingerbread still has to be finished. Small bits need to be removed and the corners and edges trimmed. The confectionery skills of Bohemian women were famous far beyond the region and every culinary repertoire was expected to contain many different types of gingerbread. Some of the recipes were passed on within the family. Since they were never included in any official cookery book, they remain a unique family treasure. To prevent the gingerbread sticking when it's baked, the cake tray is coated with beeswax. The advantage of this ancient method is that the flavour of the beeswax, which is enhanced by the pollens it contains, passes into the gingerbread and intensifies the honey aroma. The beeswax gets its yellow colour from keratin, a natural dye stuff it contains. During the baking process, the gingerbread is removed and coated with caramel to give the cake its typical brown colour and to accentuate the three-dimensional mould character with varying shades of brown. Martina Vostrezova has always baked gingerbread. Even her mother's and her grandmother's kitchen always smelt of spices and gingerbread. But Martina never imagined that one day she would be making artistic gingerbread cakes for a living. I like the gingerbread cakes I make and those my mother and my grandmother bake. I like different types of gingerbread. I love sweet things in general. <laughs> Martina Vostotova picks up each piece of gingerbread and decorates it with a thin white layer of icing to make the little brown chicks, ducks and cats look more lifelike. Collecting old moulds can become an addiction. Time and again, new ones come to light, along with images of worlds that disappeared long ago. Moulds are anonymous works, so it's hard to tell who created a carving. But when I look at the collection of moulds in the museum, I can recognize the style of individual carvers and tell you which moulds came from the same carver. Each blow on the carver's chisel must be accurate. The wood forgives only slight errors. Ondrich Kvapil is one of only a small number of mould carvers. He sells his creations worldwide. Orders come in not only for new moulds, but also for copies of old, valuable moulds, 
which have suffered from the ravages of time and woodworm. Besides being an excellent great carver, Aldrich Kvapil is also a collector of old moulds which all too often lie around unnoticed. Mould carvers and gingerbread bakers experienced their heyday between the 16th and 18th centuries. Mould carvers travelled from gingerbread baker to gingerbread baker and were highly respected. But moulds were used not only for baking gingerbread but also for making wax images. Specially shaped gingerbread cakes were baked for a wide range of occasions as one-off creations but also as mass products for celebrations and festive days. Around 1487, Nuremberg chronicler Anton Kreutzer wrote that the emperor had had gingerbread bearing his likeness given to children as presents. And there is evidence, extending well into the 19th century, that gingerbread cake containing likenesses of rulers was given as a gift. The town of Maisau in Lower Austria lay on an important trade route between Vienna and Prague. So it comes as no surprise to learn that a centuries-old tradition exists here of making gingerbread from honey dough, which has often been stored in a cool cellar for several months. It is still common for some honey doughs to be kept for days, weeks and even months to mature. Through storage of the honey dough, which then undergoes further processing, the ample amount of sugar present is converted by lactic acid bacteria and improves the dough's aroma. Despite this, Maisau gingerbread has changed considerably. It's no longer the old recipe comprised of honey, spices and flour. Some recipes have been adapted to modern requirements. They now involve lots of eggs and a special dough made with spices and beeswax, which refines and enhances the flavour of the gingerbread even more. The dough prepared in this way is used to bake what is known as brown gingerbread. The trade of gingerbread bakers in Maisau goes back more than 300 years. The Schmidt family has been continuing this tradition ever since 1913. Strength plays a major role in the gingerbread business. The types of dough are heavy and require intensive kneading, and they should not be rolled too thin. The aim being to produce a stable cake which stands out first and foremost through different coatings and fillings. These days, expert gingerbread bakers are hard to find. The trade is still taught. It still exists as an apprenticeship, but today it is usually practiced by semi-skilled employees who've discovered their love of gingerbread and the smell of the gingerbread bakehouse. In the high season, the run-up to Christmas, the bakery team can often double in size. The Gingerbread Bakers Guild existed even before the Confectioners Guild. It was closely linked to candle dipping, since that also involved processing beeswax. As a rule, mead was also made from honey. The gingerbread was sold in the baker's own shop, but also at fairs and markets. In the run-up to Christmas, the emphasis is on decorating the traditional yuletide forms, stars and rocking horses. A lot of work goes into every gingerbread cake, which later will dangle from a Christmas tree or adorn the festive table. From the 12th century on, there were gingerbread bakers in Vienna, Augsburg, Ulm and Munich. In the late Middle Ages, gingerbread from the monasteries had become popular with ordinary citizens, including people who lived in small commercial centres. It's easy to explain why, of all places, the gingerbread trade became established in the lower Austrian town of Maisau. For centuries, Maisau had been a main centre for growing saffron. 
The tradition of gingerbread making in Mysore goes back to the 17th century. As we learnt in school, at the time this was a major saffron growing area. Back then, spice traders used to come here to buy saffron and trade other spices. And that is how gingerbread became established in Mysore. In the Schmidt's Bakehouse, they come up with new figures time and again. The splendour of Father Christmas is due to the coloured marzipan which is used to make his coat red, his beard white and the Christmas tree green. Schmidt family and Maisau have truly created a romantic gingerbread heaven. Gingerbread also appears in fairy tales. The gingerbread house in Hansel and Gretel is a typical example. Written in 1893, Engelbert Humperdinck's opera of the same name made a major contribution to the popularization of the gingerbread house. In the form eines Lebkuchenhäuschens, sehr, sehr popular. It can't be totally ruled out that gingerbread houses are a product of the Romantic period. However, even Hans Sachs wrote that in the Middle Ages, gingerbread was a symbol of luxury and plenty. In his Land of Milk and Honey, which lay three miles behind Christmas, you could feed on a mountain of millet gruel. What is more, the houses had oatcake roofs and their doors, as well as shops, were made of gingerbread. The social utopia of buildings you could eat prevailed down the ages and, around 1800, became manifest in children's stories, like E.T.A. Hoffman's Christmas fairy tale, The Nutcracker and the Mouse King. Consequently, gingerbread houses decorated with white icing have become the epitome of the romantic pre-Christmas season, when the dreams not only of children but also of adults are fulfilled. The capital of the Hungarian Putzsa of the Hungarian Calvinist Reformation and the capital of Hungarian gingerbread. In the 19th century, Debrecen was a metropolis. Trade currents from the Ottoman Empire flowed west through the city. This commerce also included the fine spices which were traded in Debrecen for centuries. Debrecen is also the capital of the Hungarian Revolution, which is celebrated in the main square in the form of a statue to its hero. Lajos Kossut. A small village outside Debrecen is home to one of the last families of gingerbread bakers in Hungary. The Radics. Here gingerbread is baked in the third generation and in the Radics' bakery it has a future. Several times a week the honey dough is pre-kneaded by machine. The old family recipe has undergone little change. Legend has it that the first Hungarian honey cakes produced here were round and flat. Dough made from water, flour and honey was placed on stones heated by the sun and left to dry. Sopron is said to have been home to the first Hungarian honey cake bakers who later became known as gingerbread bakers. It was in Debrecen in 1713 that the honey cake bakers of the Hungarian plain formed a guild. From then on, only they were allowed to sell gingerbread at fairs and church festivals. The honey for Debrecen gingerbread is produced locally and to a large extent in organic quality. By tradition, 
Small round honey cakes are cut out and still baked in a wood-fired oven just as they were two generations ago. In towns and cities, the increased consumption of sugar saw the gingerbread bakers replaced by confectioners. As a result, they had to sell their goods in the countryside, earning a living from markets and in places of pilgrimage. The same dough is also used to produce hearts. In Hungary, from the 15th century on, moulds were made of wood. Different names were used to describe them, like pattern and forma. The skills of the mould carvers give us a true-to-life picture of people in the Renaissance, Baroque and Rococo periods. Religious themes and the likeness of royal figures were impressed on the dough. The skill of the wood carvers was important to the gingerbread bakers because only if the mould was carved deeply enough did the ornamentation in the dough become prominent. In the second half of the 19th century, embossed gingerbread gave way to hearts, hussars and dolls painted red. Many honey cake figures were, and still are, not only specialities, but also delightful mementos of pilgrimages and family celebrations. Most popular of all with Hungarians are gingerbread hearts in various sizes and not just as a gift for a sweetheart. Every gingerbread heart has to be worked on several times before it is finished. First it is glazed with a red dye stuff. Then a mirror is set in the middle of the heart, as many tales have it to ward off evil. Next, a thick coating of white icing is piped along the edge. The icing is then stained with foodstuffs dye so that the gingerbread can be decorated with yellow and pink flowers as well as little green leaves. The flowers turn an ordinary gingerbread cake into a miracle of colour, a gift of love which gives great joy, although sometimes it is a present that is given with an ulterior motive. When Granny buys a little gingerbread heart for her grandson, it's a nice gesture. And if a man really fancies a woman, but lacks the courage to tell her, he can say it through the mirror in a gingerbread heart. Das Herz als Liebesgabe spielt hier natürlich dann eine große Rolle. Das ist weniger religiös. Naturally, the heart as a gift of love plays a major role. It is less religious in the sense of the sacred heart of Jesus or the Virgin Mary. It's more mundane, more bourgeois. We still have the concept today of I give you my heart. It's something that has stayed with us. Even today, you will find hearts on virtually every stall at a church fete, decorated with icing and various sayings. The Hortobaj Puscha, the Hungarian plain, stretches far into the distance.
A nine-hole bridge spans the Hortobaj River where, for centuries now, an annual shepherd's meeting and market have taken place. Naturally, the goods on sale also include gingerbread. In the gingerbread bakehouse run by Teresia Kalmar Katonane, true miracles are created. Diverse seeds like pumpkin seeds, black and white sesame, sunflower seeds, lentils and fine lines of wheat flour are placed on fine honey dough that has been rolled thin. From these ingredients, works of art are created in a process in which time plays no role. The precise placing of each seed goes hand in hand with a blessing designed to bring good fortune to the owner. Gingerbread is often linked to a belief in magical acts and spells. Sometimes magic formulae were etched into the cake and the gingerbread fed to a sick person day after day in the hope of making them well. A piece of gingerbread cake was often placed in the cradle of a newborn child. Over the 12 days of Christmas, animals were fed gingerbread in their stalls. Gingerbread was particularly important at weddings. In Hungary, they make what are known as wedding trees. There is a slice of gingerbread cake for every wedding guest to take home with them, decorated, it is hoped, with the beautiful seed patterns which are intended to bring very special good luck. Wherever there are bees, in the past, a gingerbread baker was never far away. Collecting honey in an apiary was often a monastic privilege. Nuns used the honey to make gingerbread themselves, while gingerbread bakers often used to settle around monasteries like the one in Sekau. The Regner family now runs the bakery in Sekau in the fourth generation. Michael Regner was not totally happy with the old recipe, so he placed his faith in new ones based on healthy Styrian eggs and the region's best butter and milk, which turned the old, rather dry gingerbread recipes into wonderfully soft gingerbread delicacies. They taste of centuries of experience of baking gingerbread, but not of the old, dry recipes. The spice mix is kept secret, but what the Regner family like people to see is the precise handicraft which guarantees the constant quality of the gingerbread. Known simply as squares, these old gingerbread shapes have always been popular. The fact that this is high-quality, expensive gingerbread is indicated by the coating of blanched almonds and a glacé cherry, which would probably not have been found on gingerbread in the Middle Ages. These gingerbread shapes used to be a popular trading commodity. Consuming sweet bakery products was an expensive privilege, which didn't always make everyone happy. Legend has it that many an abbot wasn't keen on distributing sweet gingerbread to the monks who were then no longer keen on drinking the sour wine and who were made too hot by the pepper in the gingerbread. That was a problem Michael Regner no longer faced when he started creating his new type of gingerbread. By tradition, gingerbread was more of a pepper cake. It had a slight pungency because of the spices. Personally, I wasn't very fond of it. And that's why I tried to change the recipes so that first and foremost, I liked them. I wanted to take a step away from traditional confectionery and introduce new elements which meant working with fillings and marsupin and not just with ingredients that normally characterize gingerbread. It was about playing around to find new flavors. Prior to 1850, no one had dreamt that spicy gingerbread could not only be decorated with almonds, candied fruit, icing and marzipan, but could also enter into a special symbiosis with a product from the New World. It was in 1850 that the first gingerbread cakes were decorated with chocolate icing and thus developed new flavours. 
In the Regna Gingerbread Bakery, chocolate combines with the seasoned honey dough in a wide variety of ways. Pre-filled and piped with cream, piece by piece the gingerbread is carefully dipped in chocolate or doused with it. Chocolate icing on gingerbread is more of a winter delicacy. Hot summer temperatures cause the chocolate to melt. Consequently, gingerbread with chocolate glaze is something of a harbinger of Christmas. Christmas is the festive season when people treat themselves to something sweet, especially very fine confectionery. And that, I think, was originally a major reason for Christmas being linked to gingerbread. In Innsbruck, with its snow-covered steeples and rooftops, its Yuletide market and the Munding Christmas house with a gingerbread house in front is a romantic time. The pre-Christmas season is a romantic time. The Munding confectionery only produces gingerbread based on old recipes. The finest spices like star aniseed, nutmeg, cloves, Coriander, mace, pimento, cinnamon and honey form the basis of the gingerbread dough. Christoph Munding rolls the dough carefully, making sure it's not too thin. As early as summer, he often stores his gingerbread starter dough in a cool, dark place to enable the honey and the spices to develop a special aroma. Even in the Middle Ages, there were bakers who produced Tyrolean gingerbread in the wealthy towns of the Tyrol, like Hall, famous for its salt, and Schwarz, with its silver mine. Christoph Munding cuts the gingerbread dough into slices and other Christmas shapes. Lavish Father Christmases and large fir trees are created, which are baked slowly to stay soft and juicy. To give the gingerbread a special Christmas design, sugar lace is produced. The soft icing is coated over special patterns and dried. To finish them, the gingerbread Santas are given a thick line of icing to ensure that the paper prints stick. The final product, bright and cheerful Santas containing lots of colourful icing. The dry sugar lace is placed on the gingerbread discs. Despite the new decoration and pattern, Munding gingerbread, traditional gingerbread, is fine craftsmanship, which has to be learned to ensure that gingerbread stays gingerbread. <laughs> The story of gingerbread is a European success story that has continued for more than a thousand years. It has a place in a wide range of cultures and although it still tastes like gingerbread, the flavour is always a bit different. A true gingerbread lover can never get enough. <laughs>